Joe Hoferty and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to go over um, I'm going to go over the uh, the Advanium uh, just a little bit again. I know I've already done a video on this. Um, uh, the last video I actually did it for uh, for one of my coworkers who um, who wanted me to do a little presentation on it for uh, one of her clients, and I quickly rushed through it. There was people in the showroom. I was like trying to rush through it nervously and you know my phone was all over the place as I was filming um, since then uh, monogram or GE has updated the, um, the user interface on the on the display for that so it actually has changed a little bit I just got a message on um, from someone on that video stating that they, they couldn't figure out how to use the speed the speed cook side of the things or the advantium side of things and i think she was maybe a little bit confused about the terminology um but anyhow i am uh, i'm going to show you guys this uh if you haven't seen one of my videos before i'm a 20 how long have i doing this since 2000 so like 20 23 years of selling luxury equipment um I, uh, I work in the Washington DC market and um, you know, I basically help people make selections for these uh, high-end kitchen renovations. I work with a lot of uh, kitchen and bath dealers, design build firms in the area. And uh, I, love, I love appliances. So I started doing this uh, for a couple of clients that couldn't make it in the showroom during COVID. Uh, made some quick videos on some products so that I could send that to them so they didn't have to, because they couldn't come into the store. And uh, those videos kind of got a, a bunch of views, like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 views. So I started making more videos um, in, in the hopes that um, that you know, people will tune in and watch, other, other sales reps, other people in the design community, people uh, remodeling, uh, you know, looking to do a little bit of research and uh, on the on the appliances out there because there are so many, it's difficult to discern um, what's what. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, with a lot of things now, there are um, there are reviews that consumers can leave. And the problem with the reviews is that they are half-assed in like 99% of the time. These are reviews that people make uh, as part of a sweepstakes. You know, we just got it. We haven't had time to live with it, but you know, we want to enter a sweepstakes. So we're going to leave a positive review. Or on the other side of that, there are reviews by people that, you know, instead of talking about the various, you know, performance and quality and results and all of the different things that would constitute a decent review, they give you this, it, it broke, it had an issue, I, I couldn't get it fixed, they keep coming back out. So, you know, a lot of reviews are skewed by people who have had a bad experience. And these are people that, um, that you know, for whatever reason, the service tech uh, a lot of cases, you know, could be a very nice man or a woman, um, didn't really figure out what was going on with that equipment. Um, so they replaced a broken component and then it broke again and again, you know, and, and when that's happening, that is not because in most cases, it's not because of a design flaw. It's because the diagnostic person or the person doing the diagnostics is not doing a great job of figuring out what's causing that component to break. Um, you know, I, I, typically do not like generalist when it comes to servicing or there, there is a local dealer that services everything that they sell and having one person trained to do 50 different brands of appliances with multiple categories and multiple variations and all these things probably isn't going to be super great at being a specialist um you know we we typically work with local um, service companies that specialize in just a, you know one or two or maybe three different brands um and what you get there is somebody that you know that's, that's been out that has that experience that says oh you know this is this is um having that issue i've run into this before it's not just this piece that broke it's this you know it's this inverter or whatever that needs to be replaced at the same time so they're they're typically more adept at servicing it. Uh, GE we like GE a lot here because we have a big network of GE employed service techs that um, that cover this area um, so anyhow you know uh, I do these videos because you know you see these products you see you know inadequate reviews or negative reviews and it makes it just you know difficult to make that decision 
you know, my recommendations come from, you know, now decades, decades of experience um, and feedback from consumers. And, you know, uh, I, I travel all over the country to attend, um, you know, different training seminars from the manufacturers. And what I learn at these seminars is very little. I've been doing it a long time. Most of what they're going to go over are basics to, to teach new sales reps and how to sell convection and dual compressors and other things that most manufacturers now have. Um, but what I do get to do is is talk to other uh, sales reps from all over the country and get their opinions and their takes and things that they like and, um, you know, kind of get a consensus that, you know, the things that, that I recommend, the things that I love, the things that, um, that you know, that I would sell my, my friends or family if they needed uh, to replace something or they were doing a remodel, they tend to be among, you know, the top choice uh, choices for these other reps. And sometimes I learned about something I wasn't aware of. Um, so today, back on topic, uh, I'm going to just talk about some of the updates to the um, to the Advantium uh, speed oven. This is the built-in speed oven. Um, give me a second and I'm going to turn the camera around. So this is, um, this is the inside of that microwave. Now, if you want the model number, uh, there it is. It is a ZSB93. 932, N is in Nancy, the number one, and then S for stainless, S for steel. And then uh, you can see the, um, the manufacturer date there is uh, back in June of 2020, so it's a few years old. Nice thing here is that they've probably had a few years uh, now to, to make updates to the, um, to the product, make it better if necessary. Uh, you can see that it is made in China. GE Appliances is not General Electric, it is actually GE Appliances, which is now owned by Hire, which is a very large Chinese um, manufacturer. So far, um, it's been very good for them. They, you know, there, there are a lot of uh, concepts and, and styles and updates that they've wanted to make on a lot of these products, but we're limited in funds. Um, the Chinese so far have just been giving them uh, stacks of cash to make uh, those products, uh, advertise and market those products to new consumers. So it's been it's been pretty good. Yes, you know we, we do have some products that are now coming from China, but there are they are still utilizing factories here in North America, both in the United States and in uh, Mexico, and, and I guess probably Canada. Um, so anyhow, so this is. Um, this is the, what do they call this series? The Statement Series. I guess it has this little, little brass accent, this kind of mod um, pro style uh, look to it. It's a, it's a great oven, by the way, that matches it. So previously you had a, um, an interface that was similar to this oven, kind of this um, layout of different um, modes or categories that you could then select and then go to a sub menu. Um, they now, have switched this up. So this is actually a little bit, a little bit closer to the previous generation. So across the top, you've got all of the different um, uh, cooking options. So you've got your microwave functionality, you've got your, uh, I guess I should select these as we go through, your oven functionality, your speed cook menu, and then new for um, for this series, or this most recent uh, Advanium update, or five-in-one oven, whatever they're calling it now, is this crisp reheat function. And then I guess you've got a section where you could actually open up um, or download and connect their, um, their Smart HQ app and then upload recipes uh, to this thing. So back to the microwave. This is the thing that most people are gonna buy this microwave for. And, and I hate, I hate to hear that. I, hate, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people that buy these things and I, you know, they have it for years and then I say, oh, do you like the speed oven? And they're, we microwave in it. We don't do anything else. And it is, look, it's a fantastic microwave. It's probably one of the best microwaves I've ever used. Um, I love it. Um, it's microwave functionality, but I mean, for the love of God, I mean, just, just, just every now and again, you can, you can turn this thing into a little mini convection oven. You can use it as a warming oven. Um, you can use it to do toast. Broiling doesn't do a great job broiling, and the speed cooking technology is really fantastic. I don't know if you can still find this on the uh, internet out there, but Alton Brown does a phenomenal review of the speed cook technology in the Advanium oven um, that explains how the microwave is cooking the inside, while the radiant heat from the um, from the lamps and the convection heat are cooking the outside simultaneously, so that the food cooks significantly faster. My favorite, because I have lots of kids, um, got one more on the way, four already, 
um, is something like frozen chicken nuggets. So, you know, actually, you know what, that's chicken tenders. Let me go back and step. Chicken nuggets, there we go. So, let's say two servings. Now the upper heater is set at 80%, the lower heater is at 100%. The microwave magnetron is set at 30%. The convection heater is at 100%. And you know, it's basically giving me about four minutes and 30 seconds for oven baked crispy chicken nuggets, which is really cool. Uh, you can do a steak, you can do a chicken, you can do lasagna, you can do like a whole bunch of different stuff um, with that speaker thing. And then there's recipes online, recipes that you can download. There are entire websites dedicated. We've got little you know, ladies who are probably retired and cook everything in their van and want to share the recipes with you. Um, so really uh, fantastic um, uh, you know, speed cooking uh, technology here. And then uh, this technology, by the way, not new. GE's been marketing it since the late 90s. I think technically, um, uh, you know, microwaves with radiant heat and a magnetron have been around since the 1970s or maybe even before. So, so not new technology. The interface and the way that they've organized it and they've pre-programmed a bunch of things that you would have to either program manually or if you were a restaurant, you might have like a, you know, like a F1 through F8 with various um, functions programmed into those categories for different types of food that you might cook in your restaurant. Uh, like Starbucks uses with their, um, their air infringement turbo chef ovens uh, for various pastries and breakfasts and things. Um, but here, you know, you have like, instead of eight or nine different pre-programmed things, there's like a couple hundred probably. So, on the microwave side of things, if you just want to microwave, there you go, there's a little 30 second jab. Uh, I could add another 30 seconds, I could add another minute, I can do little, I think these are like little five second bumps here. So um, just to microwave on its own, like not a big deal, they give you a big glass turntable. Let me see if I can find this thing in this pile. Accessories. The downside to this microwave is that you get a lot of accessories. Uh, this, by the way, um, is something that comes exclusively with the, I believe, the 240 vibraniums. Um, by the way, the 240 and the 120, if you're looking, the, the 240 is a lot nicer. I always just thought it was, um, the speed cooking was faster, but you get actually nicer trays. You get a removable um, baking rack, which is kind of slick. Um, so if you see those little grommets in the corner there, grab this thing and kind of hold the camera. Um, so this guy actually goes in and rests on that. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Um, and now you can actually put a baking dish there. Now, weirdly enough, on the uh, turntable, you can also put a knife with it. there so there is a 9 by 13 casserole dish on the turntable that will spin and then situate this properly Thank you. And a second 9 by 13 so that might be something that you could probably do in microwaving I'm, I'm not much but reheating giant casseroles on, on two levels, but you could use the convection um, bake function of the oven where it's not using the, um, the upper or the lower heaters, it's just using the convection heater, no microwaving, and you could either reheat a couple of casseroles or do a couple of casseroles simultaneously, although that, um, the crust, I mean, the convection is going to give you a really thin um, coating on top, you're not going to get like a thick crustiness that you might get from a traditional bake uh, oven if you were cooking them from scratch, but but either way, you, you can do it if you want to. Um, also kind of interesting about the bake rack is that's the only one that I found. A half sheet, so a full half sheet fits in there, so almost all of these convection microwaves will hold a quarter sheet, no problem. Like you can actually see you can two quarter sheets. Uh, side by side with it, with actually a little bit of room to spare. So very few microwaves um, with convection will do that. Um, so back to the turntable. There is your your glass turntable. So this is what you're going to use for for like 99% of your microwaving. Um, when it comes to speed cooking, I'm going to take this guy out. I'm going to 
if you look below this metal turntable, you're gonna see a couple of halogen, uh, or maybe that is a single halogen lamp. Uh, you've got another, I think it's like a quartz heater or something up on the roof as well. And what we do is put this nonstick turntable. Um, and then I'll, whatever is sitting on here is gonna, depending on the type of pizza, let's say it's a pizza, the heating element on the floor of the oven is gonna translate that into some browning uh, across the base of this. So that, when you uh, go to speed cook something, you'll occasionally see a little message that will say use metal turned uh, turntable. Um, let's see what happens if you do a fully metal way. Okay, there it is, required tray. Now it's telling me to use the metal grill tray, turn food over when prompted, and I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking. Now it's putting about 10 minutes in there. Now what Alton Brown um, references in this uh, video of his is that it, um, it actually will give you like a perfect medium rare steak. You can grill steak, it's well done on the outside, and then it starts to become a little more rare as you get towards the center. This will actually make a perfectly um, you know, medium or medium rare steak all the way through because of the properties of the cooking technology. So um, again, great video if you can somehow locate it. I looked for it um, a while back and couldn't come up with it anymore. Uh, there is a popcorn button that will pop most bags of popcorn uh, perfectly. So you've got a sensor option and then you've got the two, I guess, standard bag sizes there. Um, what else? Reheat. If you click reheat, it's giving you a whole bunch of different options. Now, this is kind of cool. You select something like a casserole, and what it will do is give you a um, an option to select a, a specific quantity that's in that casserole, so that it dials in its reheat timing appropriate, uh, appropriately, which is, I don't know, I don't know many other microwaves that do that. Um, beverages, kind of the same thing. You, like beverage, you've got a bunch of different options in there, so you can you know, go ahead and reheat your coffee. Um, it's gonna throw a minute and 30 seconds in there. Like most things, when you're in there, you can add or subtract time if you want to. Um, so there are soften and melt functions for like butter or ice cream. Uh, there is a steam cooking program, which I haven't tried yet, but that's something that a lot of microwave manufacturers have been adding. Um, typically it'll come with some sort of steam tray or whatever that will interact with that program. Um, what else? Defrost. I, I hate anything uh, defrosted in a microwave, so I just don't use that. Maybe you do. Good for you. Um, so oven functionality, like I said, there's a bake, there's a convection bake. I'm sorry, there's a broil, which I don't recommend. There is a convection bake, which I do recommend. High on that is about 450 and the low uh, is about 250. No microwaves being used there at all. Now, if you're into proofing, um, this does have a proof uh, function. It's not telling me the temperature. I recently had somebody explain to me that good proofing for certain breads is in the 70s. And, and normally I'll see like a proofing temperature, um, you know, in the, in the mid 80s or, or higher. Um, this isn't telling me where it's at in that range, unfortunately. Um, and then another function that I use fairly often is the warming function. So this is kind of neat. There's a little vent that it can open up. So you can tell it you want to, you know, close that vent to keep something uh, warm and moist or open that vent and keep things warm and crisp. Uh, and then it's giving you some temperature ranges uh, that you can select it's specific to um, you know, the food and how high do you want it to be. Now, as you're, as you're at that higher side of things, that's going to start cooking uh, the food relatively quickly. So, you know, here, but you know, 140, 160, ideal, just, just not for a long time, because eventually bacteria is gonna start to grow. So uh, there is a uh, feature that you know, normally a warming oven might cost God, I mean, 20 years ago, they were like $1,000. Now they're like 2,000, 2,500 in a lot of cases. So um, that is a, that's a very cool feature if you're looking at this and kind of saying, oh, I don't know if I want to spend that much money, but I was also considering a warming drawer and you had to, you know, pick one or the other. Um, 
that, that could be a, a way to figure that out in your budget. Um, in uh, the speed cooking side of things, you've got a whole bunch of different things. You can also custom cook. So if you do find a, um, uh, a website that's dedicated to those recipes, typically this is how you would implement that. So this is before the um, you know, connectivity with your phone. Um, they would give you the cook time. Uh, so in this case, we'll say it's 10 minutes. Um, then you would select how much heat from your upper heater, uh, your lower heater, um, how much microwave, typically the microwave is between 10% and 30% in most speed cooking applications. And then you see the convection heater is almost always dialed all the way up. So that, that's kind of a lot of what you're looking at and that, may, that will change a little bit based on, um, on the specific recipe. The, the timing is also kind of the, the key feature there. So again, a bunch of web websites dedicated to using that custom function, uh, but there's a ton of pre-programmed things in here as well. Um, crisp reheat is something we didn't have in the past. So if I wanted to reheat a slice of pizza, I would either go into the toast function and um, you know turn it into like a little toaster oven to reheat it or use the convection feature, or I would go to the speed cook, select pizza, um, and I think it would throw out like 13 minutes for speed cooking. Um, now I can go to speed, uh, I'm sorry, crisp reheat, um, and then select pizza. It'll say, you know, do you want to do one or two slices? And I think it throws about five or six minutes. And here we are, one, two slices. Um, and it's putting about six and a half minutes on there. And again, that may be a little too long. You can you can turn it, dial that down uh, once you're in it, or you could add some time if you want a little bit more. But Basically, um, that is going to use the microwave at a very low power level and then predominantly use some, um, some uh, radiant heat from the speed cook element, heating elements in the convection pan. Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. That's, that's my update. This is the new interface. Uh, if you did buy this and you did want to use the Advantium technology, that, that, that is speed cook for the person that did that message. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them down in the comments below. For the love of God, subscribe, please. I have like a thousand subscribers. I finally got monetized. It took me like three, four years or whatever. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.